Good morning. Welcome to the Lydia Marketplace Coffee and Devotional. I'm Bonnie Calkins, your host, and we are looking at the book, Song of Solomon. Fascinating book. And uh, this book is uh, a preparation for the end time bride of Christ. And the Lord is revealing many secrets to us through this book. So this morning we've come to chapter two, verse seven. So I want to read that to you. It says, I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the hinds of the field, that you do not arouse or awaken my love until she pleases. And I wanna go on with this chapter, but before I do, the Lord showed me something as I was uh, reviewing the book and just meditating again on Song of Solomon. There's so much in here for us because we are the end time bride of Christ. And this book is revealing uh, the process with how the Lord draws us and calls us close to him. And it reveals the maturing of the end time bride throughout the book. She begins very immature, but by the end of the book, she's transfigured. She's beautiful as the moon and the sun and pure and full of light. And so, but anyway, today I wanna to talk about, I adjure you or I charge you. This is the, the groom, this is Jesus speaking to his bride. O oh, daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the hinds of the field, that you do not arouse or awaken my love until she pleases. This is so fascinating. Three times in the book is this statement. Look at um, verse uh, chapter 3, verse 5. He says it again. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the hinds of the field, that you do not arouse or awaken my love until she pleases. And then again, we see this in chapter 8, verse 4. 8, verse 4. I want you to swear, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not arouse or awaken my love until she pleases. What is this about? You know, God is so gentle and so loving with us and so patient with us. Uh, he, he allows us uh, spiritual rest and he waits for us to come to him. He waits for the decisions of our heart. And, um, but there's something else I want us to notice. Every time the bride is at rest, and, and for a minute, I just talk, comment on this rest. You know, during the day, our mind is so busy. We're, we have a million things going on in our head of all the obligations of the day. We may be thinking about um, our family, our friends, who knows? There's all, all the obligations that we have, the daily tasks that we undertake. And so when our natural mind is processing natural things, we are asleep to the Lord. Spiritually, it's hard for him to reach us because our mind is so busy. But at nighttime, when we lay down and we sleep, the natural mind is quiet. And so the mind of the spirit can discern and hear the Lord. Have you ever thought of that? <laughs> it's so true. Because spiritually, there's an openness that's not there during the day. Unless we're um, in meditation or we're reading the word or we're interceding, unless we're deliberately connecting with the Lord. But other than that, we're asleep to him. Now notice in chapter five, the bride says, I was asleep, but my heart was awake. A voice, my beloved was knocking. And then it goes on where he says, open to me, my sister, my darling. But because she was asleep and because her natural mind was quiet, she says she was asleep, but her heart was awake. So often, the Lord will bring revelation to us in the nighttime. 
so, so often. And if we are, in fact, the more that we meditate the word at night, the better. Because very often it's in the nighttime that the Holy Spirit will begin weaving the things that we've been meditating and thinking on. He'll weave it all together and he'll start speaking to us about spiritual things for our lives. So I also want to point this out. <laughs> this is what really got me this week is that the Lord showed me that every time that the bride was at rest, right after that was visitation. So on my bed, night after night, I sought him. And right after that, she finds him. In chapter two, uh, as soon as the bridegroom says, do not arouse or awaken my love until she pleases, the next verse, listen, my beloved, behold, he's climbing on the mountains, leaping on the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, he is standing behind our wall. He is looking through the windows. He is peering through the lattice. That's visitation. That's the Lord coming in the night hours, looking in on us, looking in on his bride. The next time that we see it is in chapter three, verse five, right after he says, do not arouse or awaken my love. It's followed by this incredible vision of Solomon on his wedding day. The bride of Christ will see him before he reveals himself to the world. And here is a beautiful picture of, the, of Solomon, a type of Jesus, coming on his traveling couch, surrounded by his mighty men, and they're carrying him, and it says it's the day of his wedding. This is a pre-appearance of the Lord on his wedding day. Beautiful. The next time that we see this is in chapter 8, and you're familiar with this. Um, Do not arouse or awaken my love until she pleases. And then the next verse, who is this coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Amen. This is such a beautiful picture for us that as we rest in him, as we meditate him, as he comes to us to bring higher revelation, it's there for us. He's revealing himself to us. He's revealing himself to his bride. So beautiful. Let's go back to the scriptures. Uh, chapter two, he says, um, well, she says, listen, my beloved, behold, he's coming, climbing on the mountains, leaping on the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, he is standing behind our wall. He is looking through the windows. He is peering through the lattice. You know, Song of Solomon is a window into the spirit realm. Some people say the spirit realm is a parallel universe. It's, it's different than our natural, tangible creation that we live in. Our creation is a fallen creation, but in many aspects, it's a copy of the heavenly realm. See, we're just a reflection of the heavenly realm. And the heavenly realm the realm of the third heaven is so pure, it almost appears like it's a fantasy world. And those that have visited heaven have, come, have told us that the grass is green or everything's alive. There's a peace because there's not the strife and the struggle that we have here in our life and in our world, in this tangible created world that has fallen. So here we have this picture of the Lord coming like a gazelle or a, a deer. On the East Coast, um, where I grew up in Philadelphia, uh, there are many winding roads and there's, 
they're tree lined so at night it's very dark and on each side of the road there's normally like a drainage ditch for water so you have to be so careful driving at night and very often uh, in some of the areas where it's very wooded you'll be driving and suddenly a deer will just leap out from nowhere right in front of the car and it's like they they just appear you don't see them ahead they're just so suddenly and of course there's many car accidents due to that but what what she's saying that her beloved is like that he can come instantly when she's least expecting here he comes leaping on the mountains because in the spirit realm there is no um there's no nothing that hinders uh, his, his, him coming and going. He's omnipresent. So he can be on one side of the world in a moment and then on the other side of the world in another moment. He comes that quickly to her. And so she says, my beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. He's just here and then he's gone. And we see that throughout the book. He's always coming and going. And then she says, behold, he is standing behind our wall. He is looking through the windows. He's peering through the lattice. Well, you know, um, that is exactly, in reality, what is happening in the spirit realm. The Bible tells us that when two or three are gathered in his name, that he's in the midst of us. See, because we don't see him with our natural eyes, sometimes we dismiss that truth. But he is with us in his presence. And he, it's like he's standing on the other side of the veil. And he looks through the veil into the natural realm, the realm where we live. And throughout this book, we can see that the Shulamite woman is in the natural created realm. However, we see many uh, visions and we see a catching up process where she's actually taken into the spirit realm where Jesus is. And so this can be our experience. This can be something that touches our life. And the Lord would desire for us to come to him. He's always calling us, come closer to me. He waits for our desire. He waits for our heart to call out to him. And that's part of the awakening process. Every time the bride awakes, she moves into a higher level of revelation. Every time there is an awakening in the story of Song of Solomon, you can see that she's moving up into a deeper and more mature revelation of Christ. You see, this is the Lord's intention for us, but he waits for our desire. So much of our spiritual life, our spiritual walk, depends on the desire that's within us. You remember when Jesus was speaking to the disciples, and uh, he apparently was addressing a larger group of people because he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to them it has not. You see, there's always within an audience, there are those who, who it has been given to know the mysteries and to those who have not. So the bride of Christ is someone whose heart is fully desiring him, fully desiring to walk in intimacy, and love. She doesn't have any other lovers. She has one focus on him. She not only doesn't have other lovers, she's lost interest in the things of the world that entice so many people. She's lost interest in big houses and cars and finance and having a bank account, in trips and in retirement homes. She's lost interest. She has one love and she waits for her beloved. Come, Lord Jesus, we're waiting for you. And I think it's so beautiful that he does visit us. He looks through our windows. He peers through the lattice. He's standing in the spirit realm, but he looks in on us. 
In the book of Revelation, it says that he is the one who searches the hearts. You know, no matter where we are, he is able to look into our heart. He looks into the deep things, the things that we might think are concealed. But he looks for our motives. He looks at our desires. He's not so interested in what we're doing as he is in what we're becoming. He wants us to become his bride. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day today. And join me again next week. Be blessed in Jesus' name.